What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So this is the new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3. You've probably already seen it. It came out last week, but I wanted to wait a little bit for the initial hype to die down before offering my honest thoughts on this thing. Of course, this is one of Samsung's latest foldables. This is more so a flippable, I guess. It's not their flagship half phone, half tablet Z Fold. This is the much more practical smartphone sized nod to the flip phones of years past. Past. And I think between the two new Samsung foldables, this is probably the more practical device that at least has the potential for some mass appeal. There's not a ton that's new or different with this Z Flip 3 versus the previous Gen Z Flip. It's tougher, which is good. It has the usual spec bumps. The biggest change really is actually the cost. Instead of an eye-watering four-figure price tag, this new Z Flip 3 starts at $999, which puts it more in line with similar everyday flagship phones. But Best Buy is actually already discounted counting this phone, $200 off, and there's no activation or carrier specific deal with this. Pretty crazy to already have it go on sale, and I'll leave that deal linked down below if you might be interested. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that I consider the Z Flip to be closer to a foldable, flippable, everyday smartphone, not a folding mini tablet. It's not, in my opinion, even a flagship folding product, and that's actually evident right from the unboxing experience. There's no grand packaging like the Z Fold, no extra accessories, no accessories at all, really, just a charging cable and a stack of paperwork. And at first glance, it looks more like you unboxed an S21 or some other random Samsung device. But when you start going through the setup process on the phone itself, you'll be greeted by some additional care instructions, obviously unique to this device, and this is really your first introduction into this new world of foldables. You get warnings about pressing the screen too hard, not folding any objects into the phone, avoiding dust and debris and magnets. It's a little scary to see all those stipulations on such an expensive item that you'll be using a million times a day in a million different ways. It's no secret that durability has been the biggest point of contention for these folding phones, and Samsung just wants you to still be aware of that. But they have also made a lot of progress, I think, in addressing some of those concerns concerns, which I'll get into. So unfolded, the Z Flip kind of looks like every other Samsung phone, at least from the front. And that's not a bad thing at all. That's actually what I really like. You can kind of tell though that it's taller and skinnier than other Samsung devices. In the hand, that slight difference in form factor is actually noticeable and side by side with some other phones, the difference is even a little more apparent. It's a 6.7 inch display, just at a weird 22 by nine aspect ratio. All in all, this overall design I consider to be a big benefit though in going with the flip in particular. It's just more practical and more familiar too. Now that's not to say that everything is the norm. One of the first things that stood out to me was the raised edge that surrounds the display. It's pretty prominent. It's not something you'll experience on any other phone. It's a physical bump that you're gonna feel when you tap near the edge of the screen or swipe over to bring up the edge panel, for example. It's not a deal breaker. I totally understand that it's probably a durability thing or a requirement of this new unique screen technology, but it's a design element nonetheless that is specific to this phone being a foldable. Also, you kind of start to collect little dust particles and stuff along that raised edge, which isn't great. Aside from that, you still have a decent screen to body ratio. There's the traditional hole punch selfie camera, no invisible one like on the Z Fold. But from the front, at a glance, this more traditional setup I think is a big plus. The rest of the phone, at least physically, sees some slight design changes and improvements. It's a thicker, boxier feeling phone, premium materials all around, a combination of glass and metal that makes this phone feel like you paid a slight premium for it versus the usual plastic Samsung devices. Along with looking nice, the new Z Flip is also more durable in that it's water resistant, which is very surprising given all its moving parts and special folding screen. So I commend Samsung in going the extra effort to offer that. And it has all the other usual smartphone bits you'd expect, wireless charging and even reverse wireless charging. There's the power button fingerprint sensor combo, which is a great setup. I definitely like having that. You get dual speakers, one down below and one in the earpiece. They sound really good. The unfolded 
extended form factor of this phone is kind of comparable to an S21, I guess. And even the internals, with the Snapdragon 888 chipset and 8 gigs of RAM, that's plenty to be classified as a flagship caliper smartphone with all the power and capabilities you'd want. It's a top of the line Android device in that sense, but the whole entire point of this phone is its foldy, flippy form factor. So let's get into that whole thing now. First off, even though this is like the fourth or fifth different folding phone Samsung has offered now, there's no hiding the slight crease in the middle of the display. It's there, you can see it, you can even feel it with your fingertip. And I don't really know how Samsung could ever make it not crease. It's a physical thing that you're folding in half. It's gonna have a little indent. That's just how it works. But the screen itself has been upgraded a few different ways. And this is another really worthwhile change. In running your finger across the screen, it feels a lot more like a hard glass versus a soft plastic like previous Fold devices. That's something I really appreciate because with the Fold 2, for example, I kind of thought the inner folding screen felt cheap and delicate. This is a big improvement here. Also, the 6.7 inch display is now a dynamic OLED panel with a 120 hertz refresh rate and HDR10 support, and it's crazy bright. It's a 2640 by 1080 resolution, which considering everything else is fine by me. And I think overall, the improvements to this display are another big selling point to this new Z Flip. In actually opening and closing this phone, sort of playing around with the hinge and everything, I think the mechanism and the device as a whole feels really sturdy. There's no creaks or cracks or noises. I never feel like it's delicate or that I'm gonna break it. The hinge can be positioned at nearly every angle, which is kind of cool, but that does make opening and closing the Z Flip kind of difficult. It's not like an old school flip phone where you fling it open with your thumb and it clicks into place. I can barely push this open with just my thumb, and usually I'm kind of pulling it apart with both hands like a laptop. Closing it shut is easier, kind of satisfying, but interacting with the unique physical folding mechanisms takes some getting used to and I think everyone is gonna do it differently. In its closed state, the Z Flip is kind of like half the size of the average smartphone, which makes pocketing it kind of nice. And it's also easier to hold when you're on the go as well. It's still thick. It's slightly more than twice the thickness of an average smartphone, obviously. But this is another aspect of the phone that I know people will like. And actually, it's kind of the whole point of this thing. You get a full-size smartphone and a familiar form factor that can also be folded up and tucked away. When the flip is closed, there's still a gap between the two sides of the screen. And this is something to think about. I could see like some debris or pocket change or something get caught up inside there, which wouldn't be good. But the whole rest of the shut phone from the sides to the hinge to the spine, it all seems really well put together. And I haven't found any weak points or areas that I feel would be an issue with durability. On the outside of the Z Flip, there's also that secondary sort of mini display that serves as your at a glance notification center amongst other things. On this new Z Flip 3, it's bigger, it's brighter, it shows more information, which which is all great. You can swipe in every which direction to get messages and other app notifications, obviously. You can also check the time, the date, battery percentage, control some music, check the weather, see your calendar events and alarms, even set a timer and launch Samsung Pay, amongst some other widgets as well. And I've found this secondary outer display relatively useful, mostly for checking the time and some notifications, though in the end, you'll still need to open the phone up anyway to reply or interact with anything. The only issue I'm having though is that from time to time the outer display seems to go unresponsive every once in a while and I've seen other people have that issue too. But on a foldable phone like this you need a secondary display regardless and I'm glad the new Z Flip gets an upgrade here. So there's one other flippable element to this phone and that's flex mode. If you bend the Z Flip halfway some apps will launch into a sort of half and half mode. It'll split the app a specific way for this device. YouTube for example supports it. Some of Samsung's own apps like the gallery and calendar and camera apps all have a flex mode. It's just a different way of displaying what's already on the screen by more definitively dividing the top from the bottom. And for me it really hasn't been all that useful. And in fact in some cases like with YouTube it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. You get less content on the bottom portion. The top area plays the video in an even smaller window. There's no reason for all that. So flex mode for me is a pass right now but maybe in the future, there'll be more interesting and useful apps that utilize it. So that's the deal with the flippy portion of the Z Flip. 
And all in all, I'm interested to see how I feel about it in the coming weeks as I continue to use this device. Now, at this point, I think most everything with the Z Flip is pretty good. It is a flagship caliper Samsung device unfolded. It's much improved and fairly practical foldable, but there's two areas where I think this phone still falls short. With the battery capacity and charging speeds, Samsung unfortunately doesn't excel here. This phone has just a 3300 milliamp battery inside, which isn't a whole lot compared to the 4500 plus sizes on most other phones nowadays. And you get just 15 watt max charging speeds. So battery and power here, not looking so good but I'll continue to test this phone and see exactly what the longevity is like in some real world use. Right off the bat though, to me, it doesn't seem like this phone is an all day device. And finally, there's also the matter of those cameras, which Samsung essentially left the same as last year. The rear lens setup has two lenses, a 12 megapixel main shooter and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. And the selfie camera is a 10 megapixel lens. There's plenty of capabilities inside the camera app, lots of flagship-esque features, but I really don't consider those hardware specs to be flagship caliber and it's probably the single biggest miss with a phone as a whole. Sure, there's the fun little flippy specific elements to the camera setup, like the flex mode I mentioned earlier, and the ability to use the outside mini screen as a viewfinder for selfies. But this is not a smartphone where the camera was the focus. That's pretty obvious, and it's kind of disappointing nowadays. Though I guess with everything else going on and in dropping the price, some sacrifices probably had to be made, and this is mainly where those sacrifices can be found. Overall, I consider this new Z Flip 3 to be a fairly decent upgrade from last year's and it attempts to position itself as a more affordable mainstream device. It's fun, it's more practical, and the price tag, if you are in the market for a flagship phone at least, is now finally competitive. But is it still too early to jump on the folding phone bandwagon? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.